In this video, we're speaking about 3D printers, specifically my one how duplicator 4S. So I've had a 3D printer for a while now and various people have either asked me on some of my other Twitter channels or friends have asked me, how do I find my 3D printer? Do I still use it? Do I think it was worthwhile? Um, you know, what do they recommend? Is it better to get uh, a MakerBot or one of these other plethora of 3D printers you can get now? So I can't speak for all of them, but I can speak for my experiences with this. So I thought I would briefly cover it right now. So I've had this printer now for a couple of years. I've done over 1200 hours worth of printing. I printed all sorts of things. This here was my first ever 3D print. This is like the test print. It was one of the models that came uh, with it. So straight away, I was really impressed with how easy it was to calibrate and the quality of print. If you're new to 3D printing, you will find out that when you first try, there's various elements that you have to consider when you're trying to get a good print. So that's also uh, the heat of the nozzles, the heat of the bed, the type of plastic you're using, whether that be PLA or ABS, uh, and just fine tuning it to the different brands of plastic as well. So I've just finished uh, a test print, which I have right here in my pocket, um, a little kind of tree shaped coaster with some new PLA I've not tried before. Overall, this has come out quite well, uh, but I think it was too hot. So this was at 200 degrees, um, so I think I need to cool it down because there's a bit of bobbling on there, and I think it was heating up too much. One of the other great things about having a 3D printer is once you have one, there's various things that you can print to improve the experience, as well as fix things, uh, both with the 3D printer and other things. So just an example of what I've printed uh, with my duplicator here is you can see these little orange tabs. Now this is to keep the lid on and square. So this is a bit wobbly because it's on a, on a rotating plate so I can spin it around for you. Um, but they were printed with ABS. It's just really st to stop this top moving around when you're printing with ABS. Also printed this kind of little I guess, bracket or holder. And this is so that uh, when you're running, when you're printing ABS, you want uh, to retain the heat, so you want the lid on, you want the door closed. When you're printing in PLA, uh, cooling is more important. So you want to take this lid off, and you want to kind of ideally have the door open all the time. So you print this, which will then sit there like this to keep it uh, open while you're printing. So there's loads of little things you can do with that. Uh, this particular model also has an SD card, uh, which it reads off. So I printed uh, a little bracket that kind of helps it uh, helps you put the card in and out. So without that, um, there was a very small gap. And even though you wouldn't think it, you could drop the SD card through that gap instead of actually into the SD slot. And it's the right pain in the arse to take the bottom off uh, to print that. So a lot of these things, thankfully, other people have already done the hard work for you. So you can go to Thingiverse and download them and print them yourself. Or if you're into designing uh, and modeling your own things, you can do that and then print them here. So. This one ho duplicator 4S, uh, it comes in a couple of models. It's still available in some places now. This is the, the more robust metal black version. They also do a fully uh, acrylic one as well. I went for this just because it looks a bit more industrial and kind of fits in uh, with, the, with the look and feel that I prefer. The reason I went for this, uh, and I, don't, I definitely wouldn't change my mind because so far Touchwood have had no problems with this. I went with this because basically it's a rip-off of the MakerBot uh, replicator, which was you know, a really popular printer. And this has a few features that I really wanted. I wanted the, to have the heated bed. So even though I print with PLA most of the time and officially you don't need a heated bed, I find I get better results with a heated bed with PLA, um, so I use that. Also, this has dual extruder. So what that means is I can print uh, with two types of plastic at the same time, so I can do different layers, change the colours, etc. Now, in all in a couple of years I've had this, I've only ever done that once, just to test. Most of the time, I don't have a need for that, but I figured um, for a slight kind of increase in price, it made sense to get a dual extruder um, because you know, then if I ever need to, I'm kind of future-proofed. Um, so I would still recommend if people have 
the opportunity and they can afford just to push it a little bit more to get a dual extruder and um, just because it gives you some backup and also if one of those extruders breaks then you you have a backup as well so i actually have the nozzle removed on one of the extruders just because it, it um, makes it easier to kind of balance the, the, the bed and sometimes the other nozzle could catch a bit of the, the print and then would dislodge it so this works really well um, and i like the fact that you can put custom firmware on this as well if you want. I'm still running the original firmware, but there is, I think it's um, Salzfish or something. It's a different firmware you can put on there. Uh, if you look on the internet, there's various comments on what one's better or, or not. Uh, I've actually gone with the fact that it's not broken, so don't try and fix it. Um, I'm really happy so far. If you're thinking about getting a, a 3D printer, I definitely think this is something worth considering. Uh, in terms of the, the types of plastic, so the common ones are ABS or PLA. The reason why I prefer PLA is in terms of when you're printing, it tends to disform less. So it's more constant uh, in terms of sizing. You can get some kind of shape movements uh, with the ABS and I actually find PLA to be a stronger plastic. Um, ABS can be a bit brittle. Uh, and also in terms of uh, food uses, I don't use, I've, actually I think I've made a, a sweet bowl once, um, but there are some concerns over ABS type of plastic types, whether it be BPA free or what have you, and the majority of PLA stuff works okay with that. Uh, the other advantage is PLA in general doesn't seem to smell. ABS gives off a real stink. Um, and I had this kind of in the cave and when I was printing and trying to work at the same time with ABS, uh, it wasn't uh, wasn't too good on the throat, so I predominantly print with uh, PLA 1.75 millimeter uh, PLA. So we just turn this round. Let's just uh, move the lights out of the way a little bit. You can see here. That's I nearly knock everything off. It's really quite simple. You have the ability to hold the two reels, as I mentioned before. If you have the reel on the one side, you want to feed it up through the opposite nozzle, and this just guides things down. Um, basic on off button at the back. You can obviously print direct from an SD card here. What I've actually done is I use a Raspberry Pi that has a copy of Astro Print running on it, which means that then I can connect to my uh, printer over my network. It's completely free. Uh, you can buy, uh, I guess, a Raspberry Pi an enclosure from them or it's just free and open source you can just uh, put it on a um, Raspberry Pi I think it's on a Raspberry Pi 1 I have it's got a little Wi-Fi dongle in and I just print remotely and I can manage pretty much everything from there so that works really well in terms of uh, my recommendations when it comes to accessories obviously you have some spare SD cards if you have some problems and the network stuff isn't working you can just dongle it in there's multiple types of film or solution that you can put on the bed to reduce sticking. Um, people use painter's tape or masking tape. My recommendation, as you can tell from years of research, is this L'Oreal Elnet Satin uh, Hairspray. It gives a really good bed um, for you, your prints to stick to and not move around too much. But then when it cools down, it comes off quite easily. I have just a scraper that I use to, to scrape off if it is uh, problematic and I just keep a brush handy so that I can kind of clean up all the prints afterwards and uh, scrape it off to try and keep it tidy in there. I do that, uh, I guess, every couple of prints. So if you are considering getting a 3D printer, don't shy away uh, from, I guess, some of those premium brands. So obviously MakerBot uh, tends to be one of the most common ones. There's various other ones that you can choose from. But this one held duplicator 4S touch wood has not let me down so far. The only issues I've had which are quite common has been a block nozzle. So when I finish printing, really if you're not printing on a regular basis, you should clean the nozzle out, take the, 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 the reel of plastic off and store that somewhere in a, in a sealed uh, moisture resistant area. I don't always do that. Uh, and as a result, sometimes the nozzle can get blocked. So I have to heat it up and get a small uh, pin and, and drive it through. But in general, um, no problems. I'm really happy with the, the quality of the prints. I've printed replacement parts for quadcopters, uh, brackets, 
uh, and hooks for around the house, uh, enclosures for raspberry pies and, and other things. So in general, I've used it a lot more than I actually thought I would. I thought it was going to be a bit of a gimmick, uh, but it's a gadget, so I have to have it. Um, but I'm really happy and no regrets in buying it. And a couple of years on, I still feel no need to replace it. I don't use it as much as I did in those first few months when, when you had the new toy. Um, I think the final recommendation I would give to people is there's lots of talk about um, the temperature requirements from the nozzle and the bed when printing. Don't forget the need for cooling. So even though there are two fans uh, on the front of uh, the extruders, you can print an adapter so you can put a third uh, fan which kind of directs directly at the bed. I would really recommend doing that. I haven't done that myself yet. What I have is a uh, just a, a clip-on fan, a clip on the side here that points down, and I use that uh, for cooling. And so the reason this is really important, if you're doing a complex print, um, you want to have that plastic cooling as quickly as you can, so when the next layer goes on there, uh, it's, it's stable. So if you're trying to build something that's quite high or complex, you really want to factor in the cooling as well. If you don't do that, you just tend to have a less reliable print. I don't always... Uh, print like that. I tend to try and uh, print in a way that doesn't um, need supports because I, uh, it's harder for me to get the, the quality of print that I would like. I also very rarely print with a raft. So a raft is when the, the print will lay down a small bed of plastic that the print will go onto um, and then you, know, you can scrape that off. Now that is fine if you're, if you're making perhaps a display model or something that has a base and you don't care what that base looks like. However, if you're printing something like uh, an arm uh, of a quadcopter or something, then you may want um, to have it look nicer all round. So if you can get a good bed that has a good good stickiness, you don't need um, to print a raft or use anything like that. So I hope that was helpful. This has all the features you'd expect uh, from a 3D printer. You can preheat the bed, you can preheat the nozzles, um, you have uh, maintenance modes for changing out the filament, um, so to extrude or intrude uh, the plastic. You can check the statistics, you can change uh, the parameters of, of how it's uh, printing. Um, the only slightly uh, annoying thing is the the way you level the print bed is just with some, some basic um, knobs uh, and over time with the vibration those can move a little bit. Um, I also print on here on a bed of glass that also helps with the printing. Uh, this comes with the glass and some bulldog clips that you put on either side, uh, four all together. I got rid of those because I found that depending on the size of the print I'm always trying to maximize the print space I have that would end up knocking the bulldog clips which would then move the glass and then screw up the print so I've just used um, some tape to hold that in place. And that's been there a, a long time. And you can replace um, the glass if you need to. So I have a couple of chips where uh, a print was really well stuck. When I've essentially chiseled it off in that case, it took a bit of the glass out. But in general, I don't find any problem with the printing, so I haven't had a need to change that yet. So yes, the One Ho Duplicator 4S 3D printer. I'm really happy with it. Um, we'll see if we can do a, a, a quick little time lapse or a short video showing you uh, what it looks like when it's printing. I think it's very difficult to get a good angle to see what's happening with the print. Um, but if we can get something, I'll just put uh, a minute or so uh, in the end here so you can see what it's like. That's it.
Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.